Hi everyone, welcome to Mechie 460. My name is Mike Lipset. The capstone course is one of the most memorable and valuable courses in your entire program. I'm looking forward to working with all of you to create technical design solutions for our wide range of clients. But first, let's uh, talk a little bit about how the course is going to run. Now, the design course has a wide range of design project possibilities. This year, offers a particularly interesting set of proposals submitted by people in industry and in academia. Each team will work with a real client to define what the solution to the problem needs to be, and then the team will develop conceptual designs about what might be the solution, choose the most likely one, and develop a detailed design with supporting engineering analysis, and present it at a design conference with a set of reports, a poster, and design drawings. This all happens in three months. That's why we work in teams, because there's a lot to do. The course has a set of objectives to achieve these goals, and it follows a waterfall design process. This just means that each phase follows sequentially. Now, there are other types of design processes, such as Agile Design and Scrum, where there's a lot of iteration and prototyping to assess the design. That approach works well for design that involves a lot of features that can be tried out quickly and easily, such as software development. And as we'll see, there are definitely times when you'll need to assess your design ideas and iterate to be able to get to the design solution. But for now, let's think of design as being problem definition, project planning, ideation and concept development, detailed design, and evaluation. First, we form teams. Now, teams are not self-selected. There are a lot of reasons for this, which I'm happy to go into another time. But what you'll get is a separate email inviting you to fill out a survey from which the teams are pseudo-randomly assigned to get a diverse range of team participants. Team lists will be sent out this week, and then from your team, you'll choose from a set of potential projects that are posted on eClass, and you'll write a letter of intent explaining why your team should get one of your top picks. Once your team has assigned its project, you meet with the client to define the technical and functional specifications describing what the solution must do and what else it should do. The specifications are ranked according to how critical each feature is to the success of the project. The ranking of the features helps us later on when we're designing to be able to prioritize appropriately. In other words, when we're running out of time, what to leave out. You'll do some background investigation into what the prior solutions might have been. These are patents, products that are available on the market, and so on, as well as learning about relevant codes and standards for ensuring that the design that you produce will be safe and reliable for the jurisdiction that it'll be used in. Now, your team will develop a plan and a schedule for delivering the project, including the milestones of the reports for phase one, which is the planning part, Phase two, which is conceptual design, and phase three, which is detailed design, as well as presenting at the design conference, which happens on a Friday afternoon, just before the end of the term. So you're busy on April the 5th. Your team will be assigned a faculty advisor, whose role it is to help you go through the design process and to work effectively together. Now I provide additional guidance, hopefully informed opinions, and I'll mediate conflict if a team has issues that it can't resolve by itself. You'll meet with this advisor weekly. Your meetings will have a formal agenda and recorded minutes. Records of these meetings uh, also become a deliverable of the course, along with your individual project notebooks. At the end of January, your team will submit the Phase 1 report, another important deliverable, which describes the problem, the limitations of existing solutions, the rank specifications for, for the solution that your client needs, and the project schedule and budget. And of course, the project budget is mostly person hours. In February, your team will move on to phase two. Individual team members each develop as many possible ideas for designs as you can think of, and then as a team, you'll sort through them, combine aspects, do some substitutions and adaptations, and then come up with workable concepts. I'll actually meet with every one of your teams the week before reading week to hear from you how this is going, and what concepts you've been coming up with so far, and what might be the front runners, and what kind of high level analysis you'll do to confirm that the concept is actually feasible. 
that it has no fatal flaws and it won't blow the, the client's budget. The phase two report, which is due at the end of February, outlines the three best contenders of concepts that you've come up with, your analyses that show how feasible they are, and how you selected one of those as your best option to take forward for detailed design. Phase three is the detailed design process. It's a lot of work, but provided that you put the effort into broadly creative thinking and have a good concept, the detailed design and supporting calculations should go smoothly. Ranking the specification is important so that you can find synergies amongst ideas and also decide what to leave out if the budget gets tight or if your team is starting to run out of time. The phase three report documents the design, calculations, drawings, and procedures to manufacture and use the product. The design conference on April 5th allows your team to present the story of how you worked with the client, developed alternatives, and then did the detailed work to create a technically and economically feasible product design. I'll be giving lectures Wednesdays and most Fridays to develop our understanding of the processes and knowledge base for mechanical systems engineering design. On most Thursdays, I'll also have an open tutorial session to talk about specific technical design topics and to have open question and answers about the course, any other topics of interest, particular aspects of design or engineering analysis and project economics. I will also have office hours to meet with teams or individuals about how the projects are going. There's lots of material on the E-Class site for just different aspects of design theory, small project management, team dynamics, and technical analysis when designing for performance, durability, safety, and reliability, sustainability, manufacturability, maintainability, and last but not least, economic feasibility. As well, you can ask your advisor or me anytime when you've got questions. Working effectively as a technical team is a critically important part of this course. As such, there are marks associated with how you work together in addition to marks for the deliverables themselves, right? The reports, presentation, poster, log books, that kind of thing. Mechie 460 is a challenging course, but with good planning and cooperation amongst your teammates, it can be a most rewarding one. I look forward to this creative technical adventure with you. Next time, we'll talk about how to work together as a team to find a suitable project and deliver a great design. Thanks.